Hey, good afternoon. I figured I'd do something a little different today for the Bible study. Um, since we've been talking about characters in the Bible and we've been talking about Jesus' disciples and the Gospels and everything, I thought I'd introduce some of these characters, people to you. Um, first of all, who were the 12 disciples? The 12 disciples, apostles of Jesus, were the foundation stone of his church. Um, several even wrote a lot of the books um, in the New Testament. So um, just to give you the names of who they were, there was Peter, there was James, there was John, there was Andrew, there was Bartholomew or Nathaniel, um, there was James the lesser or younger, there was Judas, there was Jude or Thaddeus, there was Matthew or Levi, there was Philip, there was Simon the Zealot, and there was Thomas. Sometimes you will see or hear their names changed as, for instance, Matthew or Levi. They're the same person. The book of Matthew is Matthew or Levi. And Jude or Thaddeus, Jude could be interchanged for Thaddeus. Or Bartholomew or Nathaniel. They can be also exchanged. Um, I'm going to review... Um, a couple of them today and we'll do it in alphabetical order one because it's easier for me but Andrew um, Andrew was the brother of Peter and son of Jonas he lived in Bethsaida and Capernaum and was a fisherman before Jesus called him originally he was a disciple of John the Baptist and you can see that in um, Mark 1 16 through 18 Andrew brought his brother Peter to Jesus John 140 he is the first to have the title of home and foreign missionary. He is claimed by three countries in this world as their patron saint, Russia, Scotland, and Greece. But we don't worship saints. Please remember that. We only worship the Lord. Many scholars say that he preached in Scythia, Greece, and Asia Minor. Um, Andrew introduced others to Jesus. Um, all those circumstances placed him in positions where it would have been easy for him to become jealous and resentful. He was optimistic and well content in second place. His main purpose in life was to bring others to the master. Uh, that's a great purpose in anybody's life. Um, and then we go to Bartholomew or Nathaniel. Bartholomew Nathaniel, son of Telmai, lived in Cana and Galilee. Galilee. His apostolic symbol is three parallel knives. Tradition says he was a missionary missionary in Armenia. A number of scholars believe that he was the only one of the 12 disciples who came from royal blood or noble birth. His name means son of Tolmai or Talmai, 2 Samuel 3.3. 3. Talmai was king of Geshur whose daughter Makkah, was the wife of David, mother of Absalom. Bartholomew's name appears with every list of the disciples, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and in the book of Acts. This was not a first name, however, it was his second name. His first name probably was Nathaniel, whom Jesus called, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. That's in John 1 and 47. Um, so these are two characters, or true two people actually that Jesus selected to be with him they were called his apostles and we will try to review at least two a day um, and put them out there so you'll know not only about the words that we're studying but the people who the Lord selected to be his pillars and the ones that were to bring the message to us from him and to help spread the church and grow the church and grow the gospel message. Um, and it also helps you when you're reading a book so you'll know, well, this one wrote this and this one wrote that. And then you can see where they're coming from. And they all were just human beings. They all had problems. They all had situations. They all were unfaithful they all were disobedient they all had flaws like everybody else does but the thing about them is they always repented and turned to God 
excluding Judas, um, who we'll speak on later, um, they were just humans trying to get the faith in them, and once it was in them, to keep it in them strong. You know, it's easy to say, oh, I got the word and it's in me because I'm with a group of people who all are trying to take it in, but how do you do when you get outside and there's somebody or some bodies that don't have the same belief as you do? Do you fall into their belief or do you stay strong in your belief in Jesus the Christ? And that's what we all are trying to do because this world has so much out there that offers us, offers us so many things away from the true word and the crowds and the rewards that we see them receiving and everything makes us say, wow, it would be so easy to just be like them and then I could do what I want to. And my body, my fleshly body says do that because it looks like it feels good, it smells good, that they're being rewarded for it. But at the whole time, your spirit is telling you no. And we want our spirit to win. And that's what they were trying to do, make their spirit get stronger so that their faith would be stronger in the Lord. And we all should work towards that. So don't think that Jesus can't work with you because he can work with anybody that is willing to come to him, to call on his name, and he'll answer you. He will be there with you and for you. So don't think that anybody was perfect because the only perfect being was nailed to a cross and he was beat and spit on and any other thing that you could do that was an abomination to us, a world that hated somebody just for loving them. So if anybody tells you they're perfect, they better be on that cross. And I serve a living God and he is no longer on the cross. He did that and was resurrected and he is a living God. So no that we all have a chance to be with the Lord. And we are all disciples if we believe we are students of Christ. Amen.